Hello everyone and welcome to the show. This is Andy Shed Live Series 9, episode number 4 for Sunday the 1st of August 2021. Hello there everybody, how are you? I hope you're uh, having a great week out there. Yes, it's that time again. It's Sunday. It's... Uh, it's six o'clock and we're live just about good job we weren't on at half past five this week because i wouldn't have made it but <laughs> but we're here now it's six o'clock and uh, yeah we've got all sorts of news and that for you this week um all sorts of stuff that's been going on as the uh, as the week has progressed through this week remember as always if you want to get in touch with us here at the show you can via our website you'll find a contact form on there um, it's andyshed.callpress.net is the uh, is the website address and uh, you can uh, you can get a hold of us there if you want to get in touch or of course you can also just leave a comment on YouTube in the comments thing um, or if you're watching live of course join in the chat and talking of the chat one or two people have um, already joined it today um, uh, Dominic is uh, here um, Wesley's here Penfold is here Jimmy's here Christopher's here um, I'm just catching up what everybody's been saying, just bear with me a sec. Um, Dominic says he's found his two tone grey 746 L phone. Uh, it's actually a GEC clone, quite rare uh, to include a letter dial bezel. Uh, he's also got a 1967 746 L, but unfortunately. It has a replacement case, handset, and dial bezel, and that. Not for much longer, it doesn't, Dominic. <laughs> um, uh, bum, bum, bum. I'm just reading what everybody's been saying. That's that's about it. So uh, so far. Um, so yeah, it's all go. Um, Penfold says, has anyone tried Andy's new telephone forum yet? Yes, we have a new telephone forum uh, that you can try out. We are just building it at the minute. It's far from finished yet. But if you want to try it out, you want to go and join up on it and try it out. Um, the address of it is um, gpotelephones.proboards.com that's gpotelephones.proboards.com you got that got it yeah right yeah okay good right marvelous and uh, and that's that's there as a free uh, phone based forum because basically i realized there wasn't a good uk um, telephone forum out there that was free to access um, that so there is now so it's gpotelephones.proboards.com if you want to go and have a little uh, a little look at that also what have you been up to this week Cracky, there's 12 people in the chat at the minute um that's a lot for us <laughs> um It's all slow. It's all seems to have slowed down a bit. So I'm hoping it's still working, because it doesn't always. Um, right, I'm just having a little look what's happening on my uh, on my computer here. Um, oh, I'm on top chat. That's the problem. Um, I have to set it to live chat, and then miraculously more stuff comes up. Um, um, uh, uh, um, Uh, Wesley says he's got a 746L that's arrived safely and in one piece this week. Didn't arrive on Hermes then, Wesley, if it arrived safely and in one piece. Um, Fat Hobbit's here as well. He says, hello, Andy. Hello, everyone. Hello, Fat Hobbit. Nice to see you. Um, Christopher2000's here. 
Uh, did you get the photo of the Melbourne Tate trains and my GPO 746? I got the 746, Christopher. I'm not sure about the about the trains. Red Rattlers. Is that a Melbourne Tate train or is that something else? No. No, the Tate train is something else, isn't it? Um, I think it has arrived. I think I've glimpsed it, but not sort of sat down in front of my computer to actually properly open it yet. But I, I, I think it has arrived, yeah. Um, it's been hellish here over the last few days. Just don't ask. <laughs> it's been terrible. Got, I've got nothing done, basically. Absolute, absolutely nothing. Um, not a lot has happened in the world of telephones this week, although it will next week because of the consignment of stuff on the way. I have been having a bit of a sort out, though, in the, uh, in the old loft. Um... As, as those of you on Patreon will know, this is trying to grab something off the floor, um, as those of you on Patreon will know, I have been sorting stuff out in the loft this week. Um, if you're not a Patreon member, remember for just, uh, just basically a dollar a month, a US dollar a month, you can join us on Patreon and uh, support the channel there. Um, here's the address to do it patreon.com forward slash Andy Shed. Just one US dollar a month, which is something like about 80 something P, I think. And uh, every little helps, as, uh, as a famous supermarket used to say. But yeah, I've been, uh, I've been in the loft and stuff, and <coughs> sorting out spare parts and things uh, mainly. And um, some of the spare parts that I found in the loft. Ah, here. Bits of dials, finger wheels, and face plates and things, because there's been there's been quite a bit of talk recently about finger wheels and face plates and telephone dials in general. Uh, oh, Christopher says the tape train is the red rattler. So yeah, I have seen it, Christopher. Yeah, I have seen it. There was another train as well, though, that you sent me a picture of, wasn't there? Um, yeah, um, this phone, this 746, with this red finger wheel on it, people keep getting in touch about this red finger wheel on this Mark 1, see, Mark 1, from the shape of that there, Mark 1 746, people keep getting in touch with me about this red finger wheel, and it's 50-50 at the minute as to people who say they never had red finger wheels and people who say, well, some of them might have actually. Um, this all started, this all started last week. That arrived with that red finger wheel on it a couple of weeks ago. And I, I was of the opinion that 746s always have clear finger wheels. End of story, unless they've been messed with. Um, but that one didn't look as if it had been messed with. You know, it all looked a reasonably same age. And on the finger wheel itself, it didn't have a dial label in it. It didn't have a dial label opal on it. Um, and written on the metal bit in the middle of the finger wheel, um, in pencil, was a telephone number that matched a telephone number that I found, or nearly matched a telephone number that I found, on a label that was in the box with the phone. So I thought maybe that finger wheel was on in service, that red finger wheel. Maybe it was on while it was in service. Um, and then I got this comment um, from Irish Rover on YouTube who said in 1972 and 73 he had a red Mark 1746L with a red finger wheel. He said it came new straight out of the box. He'd asked for a red phone as an upstairs extension. Um, as he thought red would look cool. He said he also has a, a phone uh, downstairs for a couple of years that was a grey um, 746L um, but that one had a clear finger wheel. He says I remember the red one particularly because of the difference. Um, it was a few years before I realised I was the only one who got to see it. So We're stuck. Oh, that's better. Um, so, um, 
Irish Rover seems to think maybe some 746Ls, red ones, perhaps, perhaps just red ones, got out with red finger wheels uh, from certain manufacturers. Now, other people have been in touch to say things as diverse as telephones didn't come from manufacturers in boxes, they were always in plastic bags. Well, I don't think that's entirely true. I think maybe refurbished ones from Kumkana in plastic bags that that the GPO had refurbished but I think actual actual new ones did come in a box because I'm sure I've seen them in boxes uh, in the past uh, somebody said 746 has never had coloured finger wheels somebody else says some of, them, some of the early ones did somebody else interestingly said plastic coloured finger wheels were made and when I say plastic coloured finger wheels, I don't mean the ones like on a 706. I mean thick plastic ones like the clear finger wheels. But it said coloured ones were made for retrofitting to unrefurbished 706s that have got a broken coloured finger wheel on them. So whereas they originally had like a vacuum formed finger wheel that was kind of thin plasticky stuff and back painted, it says in the 70s they made coloured ones the same as 746 ones um, but out of coloured plastic instead of clear plastic to retrofit to old 706s that hadn't been refurbished he said the only 706s that got clear finger wheels were the ones that had been officially refurbished so that led me to go and sort of dig out finger wheels and things out of my uh, out of my stock and see what we'd got and that's where this box of, uh, of stuff comes in basically this little lot here so we'll go through this little box uh, here in uh, just a minute um, um, Dominic says he's got reservations about the theory of the GPO using coloured 746 finger wheels on 706 repairs. Um, he says, one, why would temporary repairs need colour match finger wheels? Would a clear one as a temporary fix uh, be good enough? Well, I thought a clear one would be good enough anyway, Dominic. But this is what one person has told me. It says, no, they fitted coloured ones but it wasn't a temporary repair if the finger wheel was broken it would be a permanent repair so it wouldn't it wouldn't be temporary and it says two um, where finger wheel breakages on their own common enough to justify making coloured finger wheel replacements who knows um, according to one of the, according to this commenter perhaps um, Wesley says, I've seen new old stock GPO 300 series foams in boxes and trim foams in boxes as well. Yeah, and the Snowden trim foams are in boxes, of course, they, because they were sold. So they were, they were definitely in boxes, Snowden trim foams. But yeah, I'm pretty sure when phones were new, they did come in boxes. Maybe the refurbished ones didn't. That the GPO had refurbished, that you know, a little yellow or red sticker on the bottom. Maybe they were in bags, but I think new ones are in boxes. So this finger wheel thing. So what happened? Well, I've got a selection of finger wheels here, um, and if I start by shoving this a bit further up here so you can see, we'll start with this row of them because these on this row here and of course they're all going to now, slide down here and get all messed up but these ones in this row are genuine and you can tell a genuine original finger wheel because it's got that metal piece in the middle with that springy bit that you put a screwdriver under and it's also got a brass bit on the back and and that hole there for the screwdriver to go in so when that's fitted to your phone you flick a screwdriver in that hole it flicks up that that little bit there which is kind of slightly spring loaded and that's what pings the uh, dial opal off so you can get the label out in theory so these are genuine ones so there's a green one 
and there's black ones and there's ivory ones and there's blue ones and now these do fade and there's a yellow one there's a red one and then these three believe it or not are grey ones um, that have faded and you can see there where the finger stop was can you see it's a slightly darker grey there and that's where the finger stop was shielding it from the sunlight um, but when you look on the back you'll see on the back they're matte and they are grey and the reason is I believe I'm not totally certain about this but I believe these are made out of a clear plastic and back painted again so um, so uh, you know they're, they're hard wearing on the surface so they are genuine original ones yeah so they're 706 finger wheels now and you'll notice also how thinly they're made how thin the plastic is it's almost like they've been vacuum formed I don't know if they were or not but that's almost what it's like and I've got a couple here that have gone a bit misshapen because they've been hot at some point these you know and they've kind of half melted I don't know if you can see that the kind of partially melted but I've kept them in case I need the metal bits out the middle as spares now we'll move on to the next thing we know about which is these 746 finger wheels now these are a solid piece no metal bits in the middle no hole to put a screwdriver in to get the dial label out you have to pull the opal off with a sucker or a bit of sellotape or something on the front so they're just a solid thing these these clear ones so they're the 746 type but also what appears is these which are also solid like the 746 wheels but these are solid now I've always suspected and I still do suspect that these are modern replicas these are modern reproductions because in with these when I got these I also got these which are a plastic um, thing coated on the surface to make it look silver you know, to make it look like metal but it's not it's definitely a modern reproduction fake that and that came with these so I'm, I'm suspecting that these solid coloured wheels are fakes okay but one of the commenters is saying some of those solid coloured wheels or some of them will be will be modern ones um, is saying some of them were original and used to replace original 706 type ones because when they stopped making the 706 phone they also stopped making those original finger wheels with the metal bit in the middle so they stopped making these in 1967 okay right so we then have in the 70s we have these on uh, 746s and that and refurbished 706s and we have a slightly different version that's got a slight pink tinge to it I don't know if you can see that it's a slight got a slight pinky purpley tinge to it and that one with that tinge is off a trim phone yeah so the, those two are off a trim phone can you see the difference in colour there? But another oddball thing I've got out of is this one. Now, again, it's slightly different colour. It's almost kind of smoked, this. It's almost got a black tinge to it. But 
if you look really closely at this one, it's got a ridge around there and the middle there. You can see that ridge. And because of that ridge, no opal, either from a 706 or a 746, will fit it. And it still fits on a normal dial, a normal GPO dial, dial 21, that, because it's it's got the right sort of hole in the middle and it's got the little holes um, that locate on as well. So it fits on the dial, but then you can't put an opal in the middle. So what is that off? That's what we want to know. What is that from? Because it's not a standard one of these. It's got this this ridge around in the in the middle. It's an oddball one that I've got and I found totally, totally by accident. So there's there's dials. You know, finger wheels. I'll put these back in here. Now I know I can. So, so that's what happened with the finger wheels as fitted generated dial 21s. Of course, dial 12s had metal finger wheels <coughs> um, normally, um, stainless steel they were, um, so they don't really count. But another thing that is interesting is what we call the dial plate. Now the dial plate is this bit. The bit that goes behind the finger wheel and your hands rub against. Again, they are generally back printed or back painted. So they're, they're matte on the back and shiny on the front. They're made out of clear plastic and then back painted. And I know these are because you do occasionally see these where a bit of the paint's been scratched off the back and you can see through them. But even these have got variations. Now, when the when the 706s first came out, originally all the numbers and letters were on a bezel around the dial of course, as many of you will know, and so it didn't need to be in the dial, and so the original back plates were completely blank like that that's an original back plate from late 50s early 60s for a dial 21 and as you can see it's totally blank and it's made out of colored plastic you know the plastic is actually colored and it's blank okay there's another one We've got a blue version got a black version and then we move on to on to the next set so that's what they were okay they were blank in the in the uh, late 60s no late 50s early 60s they were blank then around about 1963 ish and we don't know exactly when they started putting chevrons on them like that little arrows on them and these were GPO issue that did this and of course this was all colour coded to the phone so this is a yellow one that would have fitted on a topaz yellow phone, yellow phone but you had to have blue ones as well that had white chevrons on them, white arrows on them black ones had white arrows on them um, red ones had white arrows on them um, grey ones and white arrows on them as did green ones okay um, so there was only basically yellow ones and ivory ones that had black arrows on them okay so this was the GPO and these then carried on until the um, the clear finger wheels on the modern version of the dial 21 that's generally fitted to uh, seven four sixes because when that happened with the clear finger wheels that's when these dial plates came along but there are a few oddities here's one oddity what we call the 3D arrows because they've got a kind of 3D effect to them if you 
you can see that and these you find these most often on Ericsson N1900 phones so basically clones of a 746 um, that's where you find these most of the time but also occasionally occasionally you find these which are similar but have got black arrows on and of course they're on silver which is the colour that the GPO went to for these okay so did the GPO steal an idea from Ericsson or somebody for the silver background or and were these at one point considered by the GPO to fit to 706s that perhaps had the dial bezel the, the alphanumeric dial bezel because the, the, the early 746s from 1967 onwards at least some of them I don't know if all of them did but at least some of them had the alphanumeric bezels carried over from the 706 so did these were these ever a GPO thing or were they purely an Ericsson and, and the other companies that made them thing but not issued on GPO phones I simply don't know what does everybody say in the chat um, right let me have a look and see what people are saying about this because it's it's sparked a bit of conversation it would seem um, Dominic says it's a shame the topaz yellow seems to fade particularly badly uh, same with the bezels yeah the bezels fade to white as do the uh, the finger wheels um, but the dial plates don't seem to it's only the finger wheels that seem to because they're the paint they're the painted parts you see as are the dial bezels finger wheels and dial bezels are theoretically back painted um, um, Jimmy says the finger wheel on my 706 on my 706s look a bit thick right Jimmy well it's interesting you say that because let's have a look at this for a start this is the this is what I believe is a modern replica made probably using the moulds for making a 746 clear finger wheel um, but cast in green plastic, yeah? Okay. This is a genuine um, original um, 706 coloured finger wheel. See how thin the plastic is? Can you see how thin it is? Right. But I've got this green one that also purports to be genuine and has got all the right fittings, the brass fittings and that. But look how different it is. Look how thick that plastic is. That that can't have been vacuum formed. That was cast. I'm not sure these were vacuum formed, but it looks like they probably were. But this one was cast. So did different companies have different ways of making them? And it's about the same in terms of thickness. But, yeah. So there's there's lots of differences, is what I'm saying. There's lots and lots and lots of differences to them. Even down to these... Um, these number plates, these finger plates. Here you go two finger plates if I get them the right way up um, like something like that but spot the difference yeah this one has got much thicker numbers than this one this one's like in bold and this one's like in standard Can you see 
So <laughs> there's lots of variation. So people who say, oh, the GPO has specifications and everything had to be the same. Well, I may tell you now, from looking in this box, it wasn't all quite the same. <laughs> um, all right, what's people saying? Wesley says, I think those are repros. Is that is that the that the the plastic ones, Wesley? Yeah, I think they're repros as well. But somebody said they're not all. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm passing on. One of the commenters on last week's show said they're not all repros. The GPO did make them to fit them to unrefurbished 706s. Which I I personally think is a bit a bit strange perhaps, but that's what they say happened. Um, um, boom, boom, boom. Dominic says trim foam ones. Yeah, trim foam ones are pink, Dominic. The f finger wheel is pink on a trim foam. The dial plate on a trim foam is also different. It's kind of, I haven't got any of those here, but it's kind of translucent, most of it because the light had to shine through it from the tritium tube behind it um, so they are totally different a, a proper trim foam one a proper trim foam uh, dial plate is, is different you can you can hold it up to the light and see through it a trim foam one the others you can't um, um, early trim foams what about early trim foams the ones that would have had an an alphanumeric dial um, again I assume I've not got one of those but I assume that would have been um, uh, again would have been translucent I assume you would have been able to see through it but you got to have for the tritium tube behind it to have worked um, but I've not actually got one of those so I can't say for certain Dominic's going to check is a trim phone is 722 to see if it has that um, yeah, it's, yeah, it's got a translucent bit. You'll see that the dial on the 722, the, the plate, the dial plate, is kind of translucent white, plas white plastic where the tube is, where the tube needs to shine through. The bit where it doesn't need to shine through, you'll see on the back it's painted to stop the light coming through just on that little bit of it where there's no numbers. So it, it's it's an oddball thing. It's got like a bit of the dial blanked out where there would be no numbers when you look at it. Um, um, Christopher says, "Do you know if the GPO made a seven four six CB phone?" I saw one on eBay, so that would be one without a dial working the central battery. Um, I believe they did. They certainly did a CB706, and I do believe they did a CB746 as well. I believe they did. I'm not certain though, but I believe they did. Um, Right, where's this saying something about dial opal? Just let me have a look. Um, where's it says that that strange clear finger wheel may have been an early trim foam one, an early seven one two, because he seems to think. Um, that the dial opals were bigger in early 712 trim foams. I can tell you in later ones they're not. In later ones they're standard. Um, like these ones. Um, but what you're saying is that weird, that weird one then. The hole for the, so that's a trim foam one. A, late, a later trim foam, 722. That is this weird dial. You're saying this weird one 
is probably an early trim foam. Well, the whole thing is exactly the same size. You know, the two, the two are the same size. Um, and looking at it here. I would say overall the indentation on this is bigger, the bit in the middle to put the label in, but the bit inside this raised lip thing that's in like two halves is about the same size as the area where we would put the label in this one. Um, so yeah, early trim foam perhaps. But where are the, did early trim foams not have these pink tinged ones? Then was that a later was that a later thing? Um, were they were they clear on early trim foams? I don't know. I, I, I simply don't know. Um, if anybody does know for certain, comments please. Stick it in the comments or something. Um, Uh, as I said, if the Opal's missing on early trim foams, they get changed um, because he thinks the early trim foams had a weird size Opal. So if the Opal was missing and they've not got any Opals, you have to change the finger wheel because you've not got an Opal to fit the old finger wheel. I think that's what he's getting at. Um, Dominic says, it does look slightly different to other trim foam dials. Um, this is his early trim phone. It looks slightly different to other trim phone dials. He says, I'll have to compare uh, with a Phoenix phone, which I imagine would have the standard dial. Yeah, the Phoenix one would have the standard one, Dominic, yeah. Um, so we'll wait for Dominic to, uh, <laughs> to find out. <coughs> Come back next week for the thrilling conclusion. And we might, we might know by next week what's happened. Um... Dominic says his 722L does have the foam disc. Foam disc? What foam disc? Uh, um, Wesley says one day all this info in my head might be useful. It's been quite useful now, Wesley, to be honest with you. Um, so, Dominic, what we want to know now is. The, the opal in your early trim phone, is it a different size to the opal in a later trim phone? Is it bigger? That's what we want to know. When you take the opal out, and possibly the label as well, is there like a raised circle just within the bit where the label sits? Um... Right, Dominic says he's going to check. He's going to check the, these opals and things and finger wheels and and he'll let us know. Um, Wesley says I've just had a seven one two finger wheel in my hand and it's marked A three and C D L twelve. Right, what is this marked? This is marked S O H twelve. It's got an eighty four and a two. It's marked S O H twelve up there. It's marked eighty four there at the bottom in a little circle, which I think is just a, a casting mark and a two at the side there. Oh, that's not the weird one. Hang on. See, I'm getting it wrong now. This is the weird one. And it's got no markings at all, except for a two at the side there. And no other markings at all. So I really don't know. It's also got a lip on the back, this weird one. I don't know if you can, if you can see this or not. But when you hold it upside down, 
there's a lip here. I don't know if you can see that. That shows up on the on the camera that there's a lip. Does it? And a normal one, even a trim foam one, doesn't have a lip. It's just it's just flat. If you put your finger on it there, and you just it's just flat there's no lip and a normal 746 one has a bit of a lip so a trim foam one doesn't have a lip a normal 746 one that one's got a lip that one's got a lip and that one's got a lip and then of course there's this weird one that's also got a lip so we don't know. It's more more like a 746 one, but as I say, the opals don't fit in the middle. So if anybody knows what the answer is, then uh, then get in touch with us. But yeah, so all these different finger wheels and all and all these. I mean, these are what people get wrong. People often put these in with the with what I call the chevrons on, but they're not really chevrons, they're more like arrowheads. Um, but the early 60s, late 50s, early 60s, should have these blank ones. Definitely. So, there you go. Jimmy says, I'm going to get my mate Andrew to take my 706 apart to see if the dial is genuine. I'll let you know. Um, where did you say? I've got two seven one twos and a few seven two twos, and they all have the same one, which differs from other seven two twos. It says the L's, the seven one twos, and the seven two two L's uh, all have the same finger wheel which differs from the later 722s. So perhaps that is an early trim phone one then Wesley, perhaps we've we've sussed it uh, with your help but uh, as always folks, if you know any more information either leave it in the comments if you're watching live, put it in the chat or go on our website and uh, get in touch with us via the contact form on there at andyshed dot corepress dot net so that's that so that is all these dial bits and pieces that I was sorting through the other day and doesn't that always happen when you're sorting through something like that you suddenly discover just stuff you know weird weird stuff that you didn't know existed right we'll be back in just a couple of seconds And we're back. Hello, everybody. Right, if you just joined us, you are watching us live here on a Sunday evening, as usual. We started at 6 o'clock this evening. That's our normal time for starting. I think it'll probably... Will it be 6 o'clock or half past 5 next week? I don't know. I don't know if it'll be half past 5 or 6 o'clock next week. Um, so watch out when the thing goes up in the middle of the week when the sort of little card, the placeholder card goes up on YouTube to find out if it's going to be half past five or six o'clock next week. Uh, so meanwhile this red phone that I've got here, this early 706 has been causing all this trouble. Um, for now at least <laughs> it's keeping the red finger wheel. Until we know it's definitely wrong is keeping the red finger wheel that it arrived with. Um, but it's the only 746 I've got that's got one. <laughs> so, there you go. Um, so, yeah, what else have we been up to this week? Well, as I say, we've started this telephone forum. Um, would you like to have a look at it? I'll, let's see if I can, if I can uh, show you the forum. Um, I have to 
do a bit of jiggery pokery here to get the forum up. Um, It's not quite worked out like that. Trat. Right, what am I doing wrong here? Um, let me just have a little, uh, a little tinker with this a second. I'll be, I'll be with you in a second. Um, So this is the forum, and the chat's going to disappear off the screen for just a, a moment while we uh, while we show you this. So this is the uh, is the uh, the forum that uh, you can now go to and and take a look at should you want to and say it's gpotelephones.proboards.com is the uh, is the place where you can find it and uh, yeah it's uh, it's pretty okay actually it's uh, it's cool but we are still building it so if you want to join up and get involved with it please feel free you will see top right hand it says login or register um, if you're not registered on it already that's the thing to do you just have to like type in an email address and username and a password and all that kind of malarkey like you do when you register with anything else and then you can join up with the with the forum on there like that and it, it's as simple as that to join now it is um, it is going to be um, updated and that so there are going to be quite a few changes taking place on it over the coming days and weeks and so um, the colours and that are probably going to change and stuff and maybe some of the layout will change a little bit but it's all it's all very very new at the moment um, so get on there as with all forums as with all community driven things it's only as good as you the people who take part in it so the more people who take part in the forum who join in the chat with it and, and, and add to the threads and stuff and even create their own threads about things on it um, the better it will become 
So it's kind of over to you a bit, although I am still building it and putting bits onto it. But it is kind of over to you. Um, go and give it a go. Like I say, it's at GPO Telephones um, dot Pro Boards dot com. GPO Telephones dot Pro Boards dot com. Wesley says he's already registered on the forum. Thanks very much, Wesley. Uh, um, Penfold says he's registered too. Uh, Wesley says don't lose that opal. Uh, must be talking about the opal in Dominic's trim phone, I guess, there. Um, Donick says that this trim phone is from 1968. It says, and uh, looking on the Flickr photos, it says he does believe his 722L, the key being the L, uh, does have a larger opal. So that could be it then. That could be the answer. Well, if it does, I've never seen one of those opals. Crikey, they must be. Rare as M's teeth, they must. Um, try and get an ordinary opal out of those. I mean, ordinary ones are on eBay at £15 each, believe it or not, the ordinary opals. If anybody's silly enough to buy one from there, because <laughs> there are other places where they're about £1.70. Um, um, Dominic says, I always thought there was something odd about that finger wheel. Thanks for pointing it all out. I'll make sure the opal doesn't go wandering. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I hope it doesn't go wandering too, because I'm fairly sure you'll you'll not get another one. And, and yes, Christopher, I have got the Lilydale photos. Um, but I've just not ingested them into the, into the computer yet, but I have got them. Right. Okay, so what have we done? We, we we've told you about the finger wheels and stuff. We've told you about the uh, about the forum and that. As I say, get involved. You you know you know get on there and start adding stuff to it. You can also add photos on the forum, by the way, but they have to be less than one megabyte in size. So you need to go into uh, whatever image manipulation software you've got, uh, Photoshop or the GNU image manipulation program if you want a free one um, uh, and, and just resize them down basically so they so they're less than one megabyte in size generally because modern digital cameras and that take huge photos <coughs> um, cool right so we are getting there um, Right, what else have I got to tell you all this week? What, what's been happening? I say it's been a bit of a quiet week this week. It's not been, it's not been overly exciting this week. There's not not been a massive amount happening, telephone wise. But there is going to be stuff happening soon, including I have got a coming this week. Hopefully, probably the worst. Um, condition telephone restoration project you will ever see it's so bad the case which is very unusual on it is totally missing and we're going to try and make a new case for it um, um, but yeah basically it's a telephone that's going to be arriving literally as a bag of bits um, it's a very unusual 706 clone made by Pi um, um, and I've I think I've seen one in the history of time and I know somebody who had one and sold it um, gosh he didn't realize what it was <coughs> um, but I've certainly not got one here yet so we're going to try and recreate one out of a bag of bits so that they should be arriving this week. Um, Wesley says, never mind all this talk of telephones. Any garden updates? Potatoes okay. Yes, the potatoes are fine, Wesley. The, the potatoes are, uh, are doing well. Do you want to go and have a look? Um, 
Do you want to go? Want to go and have a look at the potatoes? Right. I've got to take my phone off of there for a minute, and I've got to close the chat down. Um, like that, and then I've got to open this. If this works, it will be marvellous. Now this is why I have to mess with the microphones as well, isn't it? Normally. Um, right. Is it going to do anything? Let's have a little look. Oh yeah, there we are. There we. We sort of go, I think. Um, right. We'll do a bit of a transfer. Bear with me one second. Right, you're now um, on the uh, on the SRT stream again, the, the mobile stream. So I can I can move my look at my messy desk there. So I can now theoretically move around, and we'll take you all to have a look at the potatoes at Wesley's request. Right, walk this way. I couldn't do this until the other week, so I can. Can now soon do, I'm just going to check. I'm just going to look and make sure that this is all working as it should. Nobody's yelling at me that there's two lots of audio or anything yet. Um, um, Dominic says I have a soft spot for pie, as I had a factory down the road in Cambridge. Cool. This phone may, might have been made there. You never know. Chris says, do you get the email about the Ericsson Daily? But well, I have, Christopher, but I've not looked at it yet. But I'll tell you what happened today. I was out and about today, and all of a sudden my phone went crazy. And as it went crazy, it suddenly delivered me about 30 emails all in one go, about an hour before we came on air. And I think it's in that. <laughs> right. We'll go. <laughs> I've got to move an oil drum because it's been blocking the way up the garden because there's been a visiting doggy here today um, called Odin uh, and if he, you let him up the garden he eats everything um, so so yes here we are we've got all sorts of things growing the potatoes are still here they are starting to look a little bit moth-eaten and possibly a little bit yellow so it may be getting somewhere near um, harvest time for the potatoes certainly no flowers on them anymore but yeah so that's what happened we gave up on the peas that didn't grow so pulled most of the row up just a few weeds left there um, um, but doing quite well now it suddenly started to grow is the sweet corn. Look at the sweet corn. It's amazing. I'm, I'm, I'm quite impressed with this sweet corn. Look at the flowers on that. How cool is that? So yeah, that, that, that's pretty good. But yeah, I think the potatoes will soon be on their way. They are just starting to look I mean the camera does weird things to the colour but they are just starting to look a little bit more yellow than they were looking so I think they are just perhaps starting to be on the uh, on the die back stage now so I think they'll uh, they'll probably be coming up in maybe a couple of weeks or maybe a month perhaps something like that um Things are happening in the greenhouses. Um, cucumbers. I've got a bit of a cucumber glut at the moment. As you can see, there's some some on the on the plants there. I have got a bit of a a glut of cucumbers at the minute, because as well as those ones in there, there's also some in here. You see, so 
and there look so we have got a bit of a cu cu cucumber glut we've got some more tomato plants in here as well and these tomatoes are yellow they're uh, the yellow tomato plants um, not red tomatoes yellow tomatoes um, I grew them last year for the first time they were particularly nice tomatoes so whenever they are yellow as you can see there the right one in there look but they seem to have a lot more actual tomatoes on than some that's I mean I've took loads off here already and look how many still on and of course it's still flowering at the top as well so there's going to be more so <laughs> So yeah, we've got quite a few tomatoes. Um, what else have we got in here? Oh, peppers. Peppers are the interesting one at the moment. Pepper plants. Those ones need potting up. These ones have been potted up. And you can see they've even got little peppers on them. Can you see that one in there? Can you see that? There. So yeah, that's new for this year. I've never grown peppers before. So it's new... Uh, New this time around, these are. And there's some more tomato plants there, if you know anybody who wants any. <laughs> but yeah, maybe I set a few too many. Uh, so, yeah. That's all what's going off in the garden. But I've kind of run out of space in the garden now, really. I've not got much room left um, for anything else, really. So, yeah. I do need to get some more tidying up done, then it would make me a little bit more space, but it's finding time to do it all. There just aren't enough hours in a day, and there aren't enough days in a week at the moment. That's my my main problem, and there's all kinds of projects and things out here as well. Um, stationary engines and trusty tractors, if anybody knows what a trusty tractor is. Um, and all kinds of stuff to be done so yeah it's all go it is, it's all go right I'm coming back inside it's getting a bit chilly actually out there tonight I actually put the log burner on the other day I, I actually put the log burner on the other day <coughs> um Cat Blocks World 2 is with us and says, Hey Andy, I'm new to your channel and I have subscribed. Excellent. That's what we like to hear. Well, welcome to the uh, welcome to the Madhouse. You'll find they're all a fairly friendly lot here. Um, Cat Blocks World 2. What a great name that is. <laughs> um, right, what's everybody else been saying? Because um, I couldn't see the chat while I was outside, you see. The, the chat... The chat disappears when I'm outside because I, have to, I normally look at it on my phone and I have to use it for other things. Um, Jimmy says, I've got Andrew to take the Opal out of my green 706. The dial looks genuine. I'll try to send a photo in the week. Um... <coughs> um He also says, uh, all those uh, plants and that look very good and the cucumbers and stuff. Could you try to sell a few of them uh, on an expensive organic ones? Um, I might be able to because they are organic actually. They're not have any kind of chemicals or anything on them. Um, where he says, it looks very impressive, Andy. It's not that impressive where there's a lot of weeds and things. It's not, it's not that impressive. Um... Christopher's found out what dial labels were put onto Ericsson phones from the Ericsson factory. Um, um, How's the Howard Banton? Says Wesley. The Howard... Kaki, you've got a good memory. Um, the Howard Banton is sat in the garage at the minute. Obviously, when there's stuff all in the garden, there's nothing for the Howard Banton to do. Um, but it'll be coming out... Well, where I've took those peas out, it'll be coming out because it'll be coming out to rotivate that bit perhaps so it will be coming out i'll make a bit of a video of it when it comes out and we start it up because uh well 
Well, to be honest, I probably don't need to make a video because you'll probably be able to hear it from where you are. <laughs> but, but yeah, I do need to do need to get it going again. But yeah, um, as I need to get some of the stationary engines that are in the garage going as well, um, because there's all kinds of like list of stationary engines and things in the garage that you may or may not be aware of. Right, I'm going to I'm going to swap this camera back before it gets too hot and. And there we go, back to uh, back to normal sort of thing. Right, I'm going to turn this off now. Yeah, I think I can. Good, who did? Right, so what I have to do now is stop that, otherwise it runs my battery down. Does anybody else with an Android phone have this problem? You have to go into the settings and manually stop everything, otherwise it all runs your battery down. Um, let's go into settings apps and notifications and go through all the apps you want to stop um, all right, I don't want to stop YouTube yet because I do actually want to use YouTube so I can see the chat again um, this is where it will show me an advert isn't it right I plug myself back in as well yeah, it showed me an advert for I don't know if that's Sim, Sim City or something. Um, there we go. Right. We're plugged in again. We are plugged in. Now we've had our little uh, our little tour of the garden. Um, but yeah, it's um, it's starting to feel quite autumnal. It's only like August the first, and it feels like autumn here today. It really does. It it does not feel uh, not feel summery at all. It, it didn't yesterday either. In fact. Was it yesterday? No, day before yesterday, in the evening, I lit the wood-burning stove here. That's how cold it was. <laughs> so, so, yeah, not uh, not perfect weather for the time of year, really. Um, so, yeah, that is about the lot, almost, I think. Um, did, I can't remember if I showed you what we've done to the, to the 400 series phone. Thanks to Christopher2000, who sent me a picture of a dial label. We've now fitted a dial label to it. You may remember this. This is not a British 300 series. This is actually an Australian 400 series phone. Um, although it looks a lot like a British 300 series. Um, and it, when it came with a, with a horrible dial that was glued in and indeed still is because I can't get it out at the minute um, but I have managed to change the finger wheel on it so I've got rid of this non-standard sort of 1970s fake old looking finger wheel that they put on like replica um, old phones in the 70s I believe in the UK and I've managed to fit one of those possibly reproduction but nonetheless black plastic finger wheels with a 746 opal in it and it's got a dial label thanks to Christopher2000 who sent me a picture of a dial label so I could then get that into into my uh, graphics software and I could then redraw the label so it was a nice clean new version of the label and I think it looks rather good, that label. I, I do actually quite like that. It's definitely an improvement on uh, on what the phone looked like before. Much, much improved on what it looked like before. Um, if you want to see the pictures, um, then, uh, then go over to the forum, over there. Um, and go into uh, what's it in um, uh, yeah it's in the repair shop I think uh, go into the repair shop and it's Australian 4XX series restoration 
and you'll see the before and after photos of, uh, of what we did there. Okie dokie, that is cool. All right. Um, what's happening here now? Right, Wesley well, says he looks forward to seeing the Howard Bantam going. Yeah, so do I. You don't have to start it though, do you? Um, actually, in fairness, it starts quite well. I'm quite surprised um, at how well it does actually start up. So, before we go, I'll tell you what's happening this week and what is arriving, possibly, this week. Um, as I say, this, this Pi phone, possibly the worst restoration project you'll ever see in terms of the condition it starts out in. Um, it's coming, literally, as a bag of bits. And I mean literally a bag of bits. It, it's... Uh, hopefully winging its way to us even as I speak also a few other phones in a bag of bits including including what I think is enough remnants to rebuild a Snowden trim phone a yellow one because uh, I've not got a yellow one um, so and again that will be a total rebuild um, because somebody took it apart for some reason that I can't quite fathom and never put it back together again and again that's in a million pieces so that's another bag of bits rebuild and will include some uh, plastic case restoration because it's got the classic thing where the handset snapped in half trim phones are very very prone to it to the handset snapping in half and that's happened on this Snowden one so we're going to be having to try and sort that out. Why am I seeing stuff come up on that chat, but it's not coming up on this chat? That's weird. Why is that happening? Oh, I'm on that silly top chat again. Live chat. That's better. Because for some reason, when you, when you switch to top chat on YouTube, it doesn't show you everything that comes in. Um, Dominic says thanks very much for your help on uh, Ivory 746 no problem at all Dominic I have found the bits that you want and they will be winging their way to you very soon I will, uh, I will drop you a message in the week about it but I've basically found most of the bits that you want um, Christopher says it's my birthday in 10 days on the 12th of the 8th. Oh yeah, because you're a day ahead of us, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> I couldn't say it's only the 1st of the minute. That's 11 days. But but yeah, you're 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 ahead of us. Um, ha yeah, happy birthday for the 12th, Christopher. Hope you hope you get lots of cake. Um. Um. He says, oh, we're still going to do a telephone swap at some point. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, let me know what you want to, what you want to do a swap off, Christopher. Or what, or what you want. Or I can swap parts if you want. Um, um, Wesley says, Dominic, what colour is the GC phone? Yeah, that's a good question, uh, Wesley. What colour is it, Dominic? Your one. I don't know what colour this one This this uh, this pie thing is that I'm going to be doing next week because it's got no case so I've got no idea <laughs> um, <coughs> Dominic says his GEC phone is two tone grey oh yeah it is I've seen a photograph of it yeah it, it's two tone grey and it looks like an early 746 but it's not it's a privately produced one it's a 746 clone as opposed to being a 706 clone um, um, uh, 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 uh. Right, I've caught up. I've, I've finally caught up with the chat. That's what happens when you go outside. You see, you don't you don't catch up with the uh, you don't catch up with the uh, with the old chat. Right, so I think we've about cracked it for today. I'm I'm feeling it might be getting on for being pizza time here. Don't know what anybody else thinks. 
but yeah, I've got so much stuff around at the minute, and I never get time to shift it. I'm rapidly running out of space. That's what I want to tell you about, talking about running out of space. Has anybody noticed a new trend on YouTube where YouTubers are starting to open museums? Have you noticed it? I've noticed it. Um, I've watched quite a few YouTubers who are into retro computing and that kind of stuff. Uh, and one that is now called RMC Retro, it used to be called, uh, um, I think it used to be called Retro Man Cave. Um, He's moved into the top floor of an old mill building somewhere here in the UK and he's going to open that to the public at the end of September um, with all kinds of retro computers and stuff like that in. Also, if you do a YouTube search for uh, Look Mum No Computer um, the young man who runs that channel is also in, I think it's in Ramsgate in Kent very recently opened a little museum there dedicated to all, all kinds of things that are electromechanical. Um, so he's got um, he's got an old telephone exchange in there that he's got working. He's got um, all kinds of strange uh, music amplifiers and and um, synthesizers and stuff. Um, all kinds of weird bits of kit he's got in there. It's called the Museum of Everything Else. It's open on Sundays at the moment. Admission is by pre-book ticket only um, to keep Covid down. But it's called the Museum of Everything Else. I think it's in Ramsgate, I think I might say, in Kent. Um, definitely looks like it's worth a look. It's a Look Mum No Computer page on YouTube. If you happen to go to any of those museums and see the people there, Tell them that I sent you, uh, and they'll go, who the hell is he? Um, uh, uh, um, right, what, what am I doing here? The, the chat started going again. Uh, oh, Paul joined us. Paul Nolan's here. Evening, Paul. He says, good evening, everyone. Um, coming to tonight's show late, as we had a very busy day uh, uh, with our new baby. Uh, just about to re-watch it from the start. Take care and stay safe, everyone. Nice to uh, nice to see you there, Paul. Um, uh, um, right, I'm just scanning through. It's only written very small because it's on my phone, you see, and I'm getting old. So it's hard to read. <laughs> um, Uh, people saying congratulations to Paul on the new baby. Yes, congratulations, Paul. Um, Jimmy says, yeah, you've got some sleepless nights ahead. Yeah, you probably have. <laughs> I'm afraid. Um, right, I've caught up again. I think I think we've caught up again um, with the with the chat and stuff. One thing to tell you about about the show this week. We've been having a bit of a problem. Um, with YouTube and placing ads in this show um, and that's been causing us a bit of a headache just recently because when we've done this show on a Sunday it normally then stays up on YouTube but because it's what they call processing it and I'm really not sure what it's doing when it's doing that um, you can't edit it for um, maybe 24 hours maybe a bit more um, <coughs> and that means I can't manually place the ads so, but so what YouTube does is it puts loads of ads in right at the beginning it, it puts them like two minutes apart it's a ridiculous number of ad breaks and for 24 hours or so I normally can't get rid of some of them and make it more sensible because I think nobody wants more ads than about one hour break about every 20 minutes at the most so I normally take them out and put them space them out more sensibly so if you want to watch this show after the event it's better if you leave it a couple of days normally um, because if you watch it immediately after the event like Paul is probably doing at the minute you'll probably get bombarded with ads for the first half hour and my apologies for that if it happens 
Now, this week, I've done something different in the settings, whereby when this stream goes offline this week, the episode will disappear until I can edit it. It will go private, it will disappear until, until I can do the edit on it. So, if you come back tomorrow morning, come to the channel tomorrow morning and go, where's last night's episode? I want to re-watch it. It will probably have disappeared, but it will come back on about Tuesday or Wednesday. It will reappear the, you know, the, the, with, with all the ads in the right place so you don't get bombarded. YouTube has got very greedy and started putting a stupid number of ads into things. And it's also now running ads on people's channel who don't get any recompense for the ads as well. Um, if you've not got a thousand subscribers previously, you couldn't run ads, so you didn't make any money. Now, you still don't make any money, but YouTube still puts ads on. You'll notice people who've only got maybe 20 or 30 subscribers, if you watch some of their videos, you'll still see ads on them there. Um, <coughs> um, but yeah, so if this stream disappears, that's why, because I've changed the settings. So it goes off after the event. You can't watch it after the event until I've had a chance to sort out the adverts and, and prune them down a bit because they are absolutely bonkers at the moment. They drive me insane. Um, Paul Nolan says, I look forward to teaching our new arrival all about the GPO. Yeah. Yeah, the, the next generation of telephone engineers there, Paul, we hope. <laughs> um, um, Dominic says, quite, miss out on the growing community otherwise, yeah? Well, our community is great, it's grown by two tonight. <laughs> our community is definitely grown by two tonight. And, with one new, one new subscriber, and one new birth. So, so yeah, that's that's a way to get subscribers. Just, just have them born. Yeah, that's an interesting way of doing it, isn't it? Um, right, right. I think I think we're about there. Right, I think it's probably about pizza time for me. So I think that's about as far as we go for today. I hope you've enjoyed the show. Sorry there's not been massive amounts of content on it this week. But basically, this is, every now and again, we get these weeks where just nothing happens. And it's, this has been one of those weeks. I've been doing plenty, but nothing's really happened, if you know what I mean. Uh, <coughs> um, so, yeah. So it's been, it's been one of those weeks, but there was stuff winging its way to me. So uh, you'll be seeing some of that on the show next week. All being well. And uh, you never know, we might, one of these days I might get around doing a midweek stream as well. But uh, yeah, we shall see, we shall see. Right. That is about as far as we go, as I say. Thank you very much for watching. Remember, we have got the forum now, gpotelephones.proboards.com. If you uh, want to stay in the loop during the week, um, we have also got our uh, our website, which is andyshed.callpress.net, and there's a contact us form on there if you want to do it that way. And, of course, as I've said before, if you want to kind of support us, sponsor us, whatever you want to call it, for just one US dollar a month, um, then it's at patreon.com forward slash and is shed. That's the best way to do that. Um, but until next week, thanks very much everybody for watching. And uh, if I don't see you on the forum in the week or on the Patreon uh, the blog thing in the week for our patrons. I'll see you here around about ish the same time next week. But we'll check because we might be up, might just might be on a smidgen earlier next week. So uh, check in the week when that thing goes up on the stream. So thanks to everybody for watching. Until next week, bye everybody. Bye y'all.